good morning friends again into the genetics after finishing the uh, introduction and a few basic terminologies of the genetics we are starting with the genetics that is mendelism mendel has started uh, initial experiments of the genetics on bee plant and he has selected few traits for his experiment so we are going to consider those all characters right mendel selected seven pairs of the contrasting characters which is to be uh, listed into the table which is going to appear now they all were related as either dominant character or recessive character as given into the table fine if you consider the table right fine uh traits are given above the table here which is first seed shape seed color uh, flower color uh, pod shape pod color flower position stem length so these are the seven basic characteristic feature which is considered by mendel with either dominant or recessiveness so factors are of two type either it is dominant or it is or recessive let us consider the first seed shape character it is having two expression either dominancy is a round seed and recessiveness is a wrinkled seed if i talk about seed color dominant character is green color and recessive character is yellow when we are consider flower color violet is dominant expression and white is recessive expression with pod shape if we go full pod is dominant and constricted pod is the recessive trait pod color if i talk about green is dominant and yellow color is a recessive trait if i talk about flower position axial flower is dominant and terminal flower is a recessive trait if i talk about the length of the stem tall stem is dominant character while dwarf is a recessive trait so that's what the main characteristic feature which is considered by mendel for his experiment let us go further deep into the mendelism when mendel have performed few experiments some basic characteristic feature and basic type of experimental principles he used uh, uh, into the uh, textbook as well which is given as uh, two term which is emasculation technique and begging technique so let us understand first the emasculation technique fine when pollination is done two types of pollination is seen one is self pollination second is cross pollination now when we are following the experiment of cross pollination we are supposed to stop this self pollination look here if we think about pea plant pea plant is having bisexual flower so stigma and st uh, uh, stigma is there which is uh, into the flower as well and anther as well which is present in the same flower so both the worlds are present into the same flower so self pollination is very easy right and naturally it is happening if we don't stop it so emasculation is a process where we can stop the self pollination by cutting the anther if you see here from the purple flower if someone removes anther cut down the anther so definitely pollen grain will not be produced and will not perform the self pollination right so here from the white flower the another plant right so from the anther of the white flower we are supposed to collect the pollen grain and we are supposed to transfer it onto the stigma of the purple flower that is how we can perform the cross pollination experiment easily right okay 
when we are removing the anther of a particular bisexual flower it is the uh, technology is called the emasculation the principle is known as emasculation right fine second is begging if i cut down the anther of a particular flower i need to save it from unwanted other uh, pollen grains so i must take either plastic or paper bag and i cover the entire flower from the bag that bag is covering flower is called the bagging technique so to reduce a chance of unwanted cross pollination bagging technique is also used so emasculation and bagging these are the two primary techniques which has been used by mendel during his experiments fine let us go further into one of the most important point that is mendel why have selected pea plant for his experiments so several uh, reasons are there and first reason is it is easy to cultivate right pea plant when you uh, when you implant a seed easily they can grow into the natural condition so easy to cultivate is the first reason second reason is it is uh, having a bisexual flower so stamen and carpel both are present both the whorls are present to the same flower so uh, in that way bisexual flower is uh, easy for the process of crossing so you can perform crossing very easily if you have bisexual flowers so again that is the same point easy to breed so self pollination and cross pollination both kind of breeding is very easy to perform into the pea plant fourth point is very short life span so you can consider the changes within short duration of the time and the last characteristic feature is they have very limited we have seen seven characteristic features so limited characteristic feature which are easy to observe and they are contrasting very highlightingly they are contrasting with each other so these are easy to observe contrasting characters so that is how it is very easy for mendel to perform experiment that's why he selected the pea plant for his experiments now if i talk about first experiment of the mendel which is known as mono hybrid cross fine so this is the presentation graphical presentation of the mono hybrid cross now what is mono hybrid how it is mono hybrid let us go further deep into the matter fine experiment with a garden pea for single pair of contrasting uh, uh, characteristic feature so only one character only one trait is considered with this experiment and that is why it is called mono that is single and hybrid that is pairing contrasting characters so mono hybrid cross here considered character is either it is tall or it is dwarf so height is the characteristic feature which is considered with uh, into the experiment so they have two plant into the p1 generation that is parental generation one plant is tall plant one plant is dwarf plant now if i have written down capital t capital t small t small t it is current study and notation right mendel did not know these capital t capital t or small t small t fine so if i talk about mendel experiment he selected these tall plant and short plant ready so he crossed them and what he observed is all the plants are of similar height and all were tall right so all were tall plant with the similar height so here two types of express expressions were there either it must be tall as one parent or it must be dwarf as the other parent but into filial one that is first generation 
all the progeny are tall so one character is disappeared dwarfness is not seen now here it is cross pollination and here he perform this self pollination right so from one he uh, taken the pollen grain and transferred it into the other plant so what happens is that he observe that he find three tall and one dwarf plant what he observed is that so one two three tall plant against one dwarf plant at second generation that is f2 generation so that is what observation of mono hybrid cross of mendel later on discoveries have been made and capital t capital t and small t small t was denoted right so what was the outcome of the experiment of mendel right let us consider that so he concluded that toll 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 three toll is more than one dwarf 75% of total f2 progeny found to be tall and only 25% of the progeny of f2 found to be short or dwarf so which is more highlighting characteristic feature it is tallness so tallness is dominant character and dwarfness is small character this is outcome of this first experiment ready later on uh, uh, characters have been denoted capital has been assigned to dominant dominant character and small is assigned to the recessive character and that is how now we can see that capital t capital t that is tall homozygous we have uh, already explained what is homozygosity right so when two similar type of capital t and capital t are that it is homo it is pure parent right because it is having capital t capital t both together now pure homozygous of recessive trait small t small t now when capital t capital t produces gamete it is definitely of the capital t right only one either this t or this t is passed into the gamete similarly here into the gamete small t will be passed on so when this two fuses together right all the progenies of the f1 will receive one capital t from here and one small t from here so all will be capital t small t that is heterozygous where it is having one capital t and one capital t the uh, nominates for the dominant character so dominancy will be appearing right so capital t small t capital t small t if i take 1000 plant all will be having one capital t that will show tallness that is why all the progeny of f1 generation is tall into the height fine when self pollination is done well self uh, crossing is done between these right what happens is that it can produce two types of gamete either capital t or small t here as well either capital t or small t so if i talk about this capital t right it can fuse with either this capital t or this small t so t capital t capital t capital t small t right here it is there capital t capital t and capital t small t if i talk about this second one it also can fuse either with capital t or with small t so capital t small t and small t small t here it is capital t small t and small t small t that's how it can produce tall plant because it is homozygous for capital t now these both are tall and tall why because they are heterozygous with one capital t that produces 
here you can see capital T small t which produce tallness here as well capital T small t produce the tallness so this both are heterozygous tall this is homozygous tall right so these three are considered to be tall plant this is small t small t homozygous recessive that is dwarf plant so if i talk about the outcome of the experiment right mendel crossed pure tall and dwarf plant this is pure uh, tall plant this is pure dwarf why pure because they are about to have uh, homozygosity into their genotype right now the plants belongs to f1 generation and all tall hybrid were self pollinated first of all what it has produced it has produced f1 generation and then self pollination was performed and the plants of f2 generation here into the f2 generation were both tall and dwarf where uh, tall plants were three here it is and one was the dwarf plant which is this and phenotypically they are one is to two is to one so one is tall homozygous this one two are heterozygous tall these are the two and one is homozygous dwarf which is these so that is how genotype and phenotype if we consider one homozygous tall that is capital t capital t two heterozygous tall capital t small t capital t small t and one homozygous dwarf now this will result into tall plant this also will result tall plant this will result tall plant this will result into the dwarf plant so total number of tall plant will be three total number of dwarf plant will be one so three is to one is the ratio of phenotype one is to two is to two is the ratio of the genotype which is denominated here right so that is what mendel's first experiment is indicating to us fine we are supposed to understand few postulates of the mono hybrid cross what he has uh, told us what he has expressed from uh, from the experiment and explained to us is first the principle of pair of the character right so all the factors all the characters are having two types of expressions right so he concluded that traits are transferred from one generation to the other with the help of factors first of all he uh, given the name factors right now we are considering factor as a genes right so these factors are always in a pair for example tallness and dwarfness these are the two uh, determined by pair of contrasting factor one is for uh, tallness one is for the dwarfness we already have seen the experiment a plant is tall because it possess deter uh, determiner for tallness that is factor for tallness which is represented by capital t and plant is dwarf because it has a denominator uh, so determiner or the factor for the dwarfness that is represented by small t now this determiners occurs in pair and are received one from either parent right it uh, the uh, the filial is receiving it from the parental generation one is from uh, one parent second alternate is from the other parent now exception of these principle principle of pair factor is multiple allele now if i talk about allele allele is one uh, look we have seen that determiners are into the pair so each of the pair is allele so we have two pairs or we have two alleles of any of the expressive genes but few of the characteristic feature are controlled by more than two alleles which is said to be multiple allele right we will be uh, uh, seeing it further into the deep later on right so this exception will be explained later on fine the second postulate second law law of the dominance is a result of the first experiment that is monohybrid now what it is saying that 
on the basis of the behavior of the tallness look into the f2 which one was highly expressed so tallness right so as a dominant character so it is considered as dominant character and dwarfness is as a recessive character so in f2 tallness is expressed more that is into the 3 and recessive into the 1 so 3 is to 1 ratio 3 of tallness 1 is dwarfness so that dominant character is tallness and recessive character is dwarfness now exception of these law of the dominance now law, law of the dominance is indicating that from the two factors which are present two alleles which are present only one will express itself not more than one can be able to express themselves the other will be recessive only which is not able to express itself so two of them are not expressed together only one will be expressed that is the dominant one and recessive will not express but exceptions are there core dominance and incomplete dominance these are the two cases two types of the expression which is showing the exception of the law of the dominance of the mendelian postulates later on definitely we'll discuss about core dominance and incomplete dominance into the later period right third postulate third law is the law of segregation now segregate is meaning that to separate now if i talk about determiners that is traits right uh, the pair of trait are never contaminated now contaminated uh, here is not to be taken as uh, the normal contamination process of either water or air or anything else but with the uh, considering the genes so mixing of genes is not happening either it can be dominant or it can be uh, it can be recessive both if paired together into the generation it is not getting mixed actually that is what it is saying right fine so when gametes are formed they used to live together for example capital T and capital T both are there or capital T and small t is there both will not be expressed when capital T is expressing, small t will be recessive, will be hidden, what we say, right? So, when gamete is formed, these unit factors, capital T and small t, for example, so they will be segregated when formation of gamete is there. One capital T will go into the one gamete and small t will move into the other gamete so that each gamete gets only one of the two alternative factors, right? So, Capital T and small t when they have formed together with a, 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 a one pair Again when gametes will form they will be Segregated they will be formed apart from each other. So that is what law of segregation means, right? So law of segregation is only happening where gametes are formed to be remembered, right? You are supposed to remember law of segregation means uh, at the time of gamete formation, two factors are getting uh, apart from each other. Fine. When F1 hybrids, that is capital T, small t, are self-pollinated, the two entities separate out and unite independently producing either tall or dwarf plant. That's what we have understood before, right? Fine. So, that is what the uh, main three postulates of the monohybrid cross of the Mendel indicating. Now, if I talk about mathematical representation of the Mendel's experiment, fine. This is what uh, we know the mathematical expression of AX plus BY whole square. When we uh, multiply them AX plus BY into AX plus BY, we can get a double A double X that is AX and AX. 2ABXY that is uh, these one, right? Get AB and XY. Again, uh, AB and XY. So 2ABXY we are getting and B square Y square. So BBYY. Now, uh, the experiment what we have observed, if I compare it with these, right, we have A, X, B, Y, 
now x and y let us talk about these factors so x represent capital t y represent small t so they are always in pair of the parent look this is parent capital t capital t small t small t so capital t stands half of this pair right either half is capital t or the other half is capital t so a is what it is half of these two so half t plus half t whole square it is representing the parental formulation of the experiment when f1 is produced f1 generation is capital t small t capital t small t look here right so half t plus half t crossed half t plus half t so this is capital t here this is small t here right so here capital t small t capital t small t half of it so this denominates f1 generation now when it is crossed down half t half t right so 1 upon 4 of capital t capital t similarly 2 into 1 of the half capital T small t and 1 of the uh, total 4 plant will be kept small t small t. So in F2 generation you get total number of 4 plants. 1 will get capital T capital T. Right. So uh, in hybrid plant capital T small t total number is 2. Right. So out of 2 1. So total number of is 2. So, 2 plant will be capital T small t. Here it is capital T small t, capital T small t. And out of total 4, you will get small t small t 1. That is small t small t. So, that is what mathematical, repre mathematical representation which was given by the Mendel. But it was not at all uh, considered by uh, the other scientists and that was the reason why Mendel was unable to understood at that time. Right? A uh, few important points, uh, shortcuts uh, specifically for uh, NEET, right? So many of the time in NEET uh, several questions are asked where these shortcuts will help you to find out several things. Let us consider them. Fine. Finding types of gametes or phenotype of the F2. So formulation is 2 raised to n. That is the formula you can use to find out the gamete or phenotype of F2 where n is number of gene or factors fine so dihybrid di2 hybrid genes so two genes are there right so number of gene n is 2 here so 2 raised to 2 total gametes can be produced is 4 number of gametes produced are 4 when you are talking about dihybrid cross if you consider trihybrid cross you have three genes so 2 raised to 3, total number of gametes can be produced is 6. Now finding genotype of F2, right? How many type of genotype is present into F2? Now formula is 3 raised to n. For example, if you talk about dihybrid cross, that is 2 genes. So 3 raised to 2, that is total number of uh, genotypes were 9, right? Trihybrid cross, if you consider 3 genes, 3 raised to 3, that is 27. So, total number of genotype will be 27. Now, find out the number of gametes or number of progeny of F2. The formulation will be 4 raised to n. For example, if you talk about the dihybrid cross where 2 genes are there, 4 raised to 2, that is 16. Number of progeny will be 16 or number of produced gametes will be 16. Now, if you talk about the trihybrid cross, that is three genes in, uh, into the uh, consideration, then 4 raised to 3, that is 64, number of progeny will be produced into the F2, right? So, these are the few basic shortcuts will be useful into your NEET examination preparation, right? We are moving further ahead. Test cross. Now, in F2, uh, first was capital T capital T and it is tall plant second and third view was capital T small t capital T small t again it was tall plant 
right so if you are given the individual plant which is having dominant character but you don't know it is pure or impure pure matlab capital t capital t or impure matlab capital t small t so it is either homozygous or heterozygous you don't know and you want to know then you are supposed to follow the test cross so to know the dominant individual is either homologous or heterologous the hybridization test is performed as follows now how now it is done with genotypically unknown dominant plant which is this right crossing with a parent with homologous recessive trait this is to be considered and to be remembered it is always crossed with homologous recessive trait parent only so this kind of hybridization is known as test cross now how it will work let us see fine this is the uh, diagram which is given into the textbook fine now if i consider this one right which is question marked uh, it is a uh, purple flower so it is a dominant genotype but uh, sorry dominant phenotype but genotype we don't know right so this if produce purple flower right so either it can be dominant w w homologous or it can be dominant which is heterologous but capital w and small w fine we are supposed to cross it with homologous recessive that is small w small w or here small w small w so if i consider these either as capital w capital w and the cross is between small w small w right so this will result into uh, producing two types of gametes one capital w other capital w here one small w other small w so here the punit chart what is showing us that all the progeny of f1 will produce capital w small w capital w small w capital w small w and capital w small w so all heterogeneous all heterogeneous right but having capital w so it will produce violet flower only so all progeny will produce the violet flower right here if i consider capital w and small w produce two types of gamete here single type of gametes were produced here two types of gametes were produced by the uh, this unknown uh, dominating flower fine one is capital w one is small w when it is pollinated with these right capital w small w one capital w small w the other small w small w here and small w small w here so two of the four will be capital w small w that will produce half of the flower of the violet color and this will be small w small w will produce half of the flower with the white expression so if your expression look in this way if your expression of f1 is all violet then it is homozygous and if your expression half white and half violet then it is heterozygous individual so you can test it with recessive uh, parent if your result will be all dominant then it is pure or homozygous and when your uh, result is half dominant half recessive of f1 then it is considered to be the heterozygous or impure or hybrid so here they have indicated the results uh, interpretation result is all violet result is half violet half white interpretation is what unknown flower of the homozygous so it is homozygous and interpretation is unknown flower is the heterozygous which is here so that is how you can test whether unknown phenotypically dominant plant is either homozygous or heterozygous 
right so that is what test cross is meaning we are about to conclude the first experiment of the mendelian genetics and into the next lecture we are going to see about all the exception of the first monohybrid experiment of mendel i'll see you later have a nice day